Dun, 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 dun. It's a podcast. Today is a podcast. It is a podcast. This one is called The Snooze Button. It's a news show. It is a news show. It's not a new show. But it is. What episode is this? I can't remember. Ooh. We'll cover that in a minute. Yeah. But um, we do have another podcast, don't we, Adam? We do. We do. We do. Which is called? It's something to do with old shit, isn't it? It is. Just another retro cast. <laughs> well done, Paul. Thanks, mate. <laughs> and this week we're going to be talking about Transformers with our very special guest, Jamie. Hello. Hello. I hate them. What, Transformers? Yeah. No, you don't. You're such a liar. <laughs> Right, let's crack on with the snooze button. Uh, just another retro cast. You can hear that on Thursdays, by the way. Yeah, every Thursday. Every Thursday. Unless it's a special week where we're all busy travelling to comic-related things or retro-related well, things. Well, there's still a back catalogue, isn't there? Yeah. Listen to it when you like. Yeah. Right. Music, 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 music. <laughs> we do it yeah, yeah go okay. on then hello ladies and gentlemen i'm just pouring myself a coffee at the moment just uh yeah but i can still do this bit because i don't need any hands uh welcome to the snooze button episode number 21 with mr adam gattrell uh, hello mr jamie haywood howdy our guest on the show this week you doing all right yeah not bad not bad a not bit uh i don't know i can't remember the word nervous <laughs> apprehensive <laughs> apprehensive good word i thought so well but it's all we'll right it's it very goes. casual just relax and just yourself. Just chat, chat with headphones. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And a big circular thing in your face. Yeah, that's going to take some getting used to, I think. But, but not a cock. No. <laughs> so, unless you're Paul. Hello, Paul. Hello, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about the cock. <laughs> no, so, uh, you, just wave it as much as you like. I've got this big black circle thing here <laughs> in between us. Yeah. It's a cock shield. No, it's a pop shield. <laughs> it's, it's very similar to those things you, well, not that, yeah, that you would use, I suppose, for a robbery. Right. Oh, I thought you were talking about the things that you can you used to get as teenagers to like use for licking people out there. A bit, a bit of what? Oh, I've seen them. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Latex sheet. Yeah, yeah. You used oh, to give them on. out at school. They I did. They were it, like lesbian blankets or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what they call them. Isn't it them. called something horrific like a dam? Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, wow. Maybe. I think yeah. It might be. Yeah. If you're listening at home, it's, right a, dirt, it's a dirty <laughs> dam. <laughs> That's brilliant. Oh isn't god! It? I That's forgot a good they made to the them. show. Why have we oh. gone down this route? I missed that one. This is a movie <laughs> show. Jesus. <laughs> well, I think with the tone of the news this week, <laughs> yeah. I think that's where the whole vibes yeah. come from. Yeah, there is a lot of that, yeah. unfortunately. But we'll try and keep it as minimal as possible. There's plenty yeah. of other nice things we can talk about, which is good. What we're, episode are we on? Oh, it's it's episode it's, number it twenty one. I did say yeah. that. Yeah, oh, um, yeah. That means Amazing. this one's old enough for a beer in America. Yeah. yeah, this is five years too old for Jimmy Savile. <laughs> but we'll oh be covering God. lots You've about gone there Hollywood. <laughs> well, I think we should get the horrible news over with at the beginning and then get on with the nice, happy stuff. Let, Otherwise, let's do some consuming first. Yes. Though, shall we? Yeah, yeah, cool. I think that's a good idea. Jamie, you're the guest. Do you want to go first? Uh, have you been watching anything yeah, this week? What have I been watching? Um, last week it would be, wouldn't it? Uh, Flash and Arrow, catching up on them. Nice. Okay. Um, Rewatching Rick and Morty. Cool. Nice. Uh, and then it's mostly video games if I'm not parenting. So. Ah, cool. What are you playing at the moment? Uh, what I'm playing at the minute, a uh, Naruto game actually, like a anime based game. Okay. Just came, uh, came out like last year, but finally getting around to playing that. Is it, how is it? What, what sort of style is it? RPG or uh, it's beat em up? Beat em up. All oh, right. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Two people on a screen beat em up or? It can be. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's quite, quite story based. Okay. Um, runs along the whole story of the anime. Um, and Which then, is really quite long, isn't it? Yeah, I think the original series is about 300 episodes. Wow. Fuck and Shippuden, know. which <laughs> followed on as they all got older, that was another 400 episodes. Right. Jeez. And they've just started a third, se- like a third follow-on. Right. So that's that's about 30 episodes at the minute. But Okay. Longest running anime, am I right in thinking? Or is I that don't know. Still w- one, one Piece, maybe Dragon Ball. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, Dragon Ball was in the 80s, wasn't it? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. True. And so, it's still going, isn't it? Yeah, they're doing super now, aren't they? So fucking nuts, isn't it? Yeah, it's crazy pretty crazy. Stuff. Cool. Recommend it? If if you're into anime, definitely. But i I not as a casual Was it on PS4? Uh PS4, yeah. Can you like play other people online? Yeah, yeah, stuff? play online, but I usually get my ass kicked. So okay. I tend to just stick to story mode <laughs> and, and casual, you know. 
It, it seems to be the problem with the fighting games now, isn't it? Just getting your ass kicked online. I, uh, yeah. I've, I think I've said it on the podcast before. I've only ever taken one one fighting game online before. That was X-Men versus Marvel versus Capcom. Capcom. That's the one. Oh, oh yeah. Jesus. I was so late in the game. I suppose the game had already been out five years. So the only <laughs> people that were hanging out online were absolute demons. And I was just <laughs> like, fuck this. <laughs> just competition oh. level. <laughs> I'm quite good at Street Fighter, but... Jesus, this was horrible. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So, what platform is it on? PS4? Uh, it's PS4. Yeah, uh, Xbox as well, but I'm playing it on PS4. Grad. So. Give your handle away at the end of the show. Maybe yeah, you can yeah. find some people to kick your ass. Yeah, it's, it won't be <laughs> hard. <laughs> not at all. Cool. Paul, go on, mate. Christ, what have I been... IT crowd, believe it or not. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah couldn't IT get crowd. into it. Couldn't get into it. Couldn't get into it. Then this week, oh, it clicked and I thought, yeah, all right, then I'm into this. Then. Okay. Yeah. So, what, have you just rinsed all four seasons or... Just bits off. The missus started rinsing. She, she was, right, I'm going to watch them all again from the beginning. Right. I said, wicked, right, let's go for it. So, yeah, it's about season two, halfway through season two. Oh, the favourite episodes in season two. Yeah. The workouting. Work Where they go to see the gay music. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's yeah. the I'm one. disabled. <laughs> I'm disabled. <laughs> I'm disabled. <laughs> it's just that then she turns around. When she goes to get him a drink and Moss is behind the bar and she just looks at him and he just smiles and goes, how can I help you, madam? <laughs> <laughs> such a good show. Yeah. I've not seen it in such a long time, actually. I rewatched all of it with the girlfriend recently, actually. So, yeah. Oh, I've yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah, it's um, pretty fresh, isn't she? I'm still working through Strange Things. Oh, yeah. I'm taking it slow. I've got the last you few... You know it's Jamie's T-shirt? Oh, yes, I saw that. Yeah. I saw, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a belter. It's, it's a pretty cool. It's, yeah. it's a nice crossover. Yeah. yeah. But it's really good. Um, yeah, I'm on the last... Oh, he's, he's wearing a, 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 an upside-down T-shirt with the Shadow Demon and the four lads dressed as the Ghost Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters yeah. by the way, for you guys at home. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just like, <laughs> nice T-shirt. I'm sure we can on. post a link, actually. I think, Jamie, you've got it on your... Yeah, I think yeah. it's on my Instagram. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Share a link, a link later or something. Cool. What else have I been soaking up? That's it. Just IT crowd. Just crowds. IT crowd. And Stranger Things. Uh, and, um, just have you not finished Stranger Things yet? No, no that's what I mean. I'm God still damn. I'm still on the last few episodes. I've just been one of those weeks just so knackered, just recovering from uh, Geek Fest. Yeah, fair enough. Um, so it's been lots of just going to bed early and then throwing on a couple of really, well, I love it, um, Ghost Adventures with Zag Baggins. Ghost Adventures. It's what brilliant. Is it? it's, it's basically, um, it's like Most Haunted. Right. But if, if the presenter was Bear Grylls, is but it, American is it and like beefcake. <laughs> most haunted, but less haunted. Oh, it's, no, it's way better. <laughs> he walks into a room and goes, come on, you want to take me on? Take me on, ghosts. And it's brilliant. Is it's it some so kind of mad uh, Is it the yeah, guys, it's brilliant. Um, one of the guys is from Pineapple Express, the other one's from Parks and Recs, new thing. No, no, no. This is um, this is real oh, of sort of sorts. Oh, right. it's actually you say real. Yeah, but yeah. What, you know, it's not a spoof. It's, 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 oh, this okay. Because there is a spoof thing that's come out recently. That's that sort of thing. No, but, go and check right, out okay. Zach Baggins. It's homeopathy real. Amazing. It it's homeopathy yeah. real. And yeah, yeah it's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a legitimate investigation mode. Mm. He 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 puts it into. That's where he classes it as. Wow. Yeah, I was watching an episode last night and he said, I'm sorry, but we're going to have to halt that whole interview there. Uh, when when we get something going on like this, we have to go straight into investigation mode. We're going into investigation mode now. And he just goes all, he pulls a stance, he's really flexes his muscles and goes into <laughs> investigation mode. Where do you wow. watch this? It's You can you can find it online. Um, yeah. Is it an old thing? Sorry, it's say? been going since 2007, I think. Wow. It's nearly 10 years old now. Wow. Um, it's season 15. It's huge. <laughs> it's huge. Know. And when you see it, you'll know why. It's just ridiculous. Fair enough. There must be some trailers kicking around. Or something. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. So have a look on. Perhaps we'll try and find one and yeah. link it on our Facebook yeah. page. It's brilliant. Certainly just get it on YouTube later. Yeah. You can get wow. it on YouTube. Um, maybe. I'm definitely going to look. Ah, yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be worth a look. Yeah. No, none, of, none of us have seen it then. Nobody. Oh, it's just, no. Paul, it's yeah, just one of Paul's I, things. I, I it's not seen it, no. It's on, I think it's on Really. You know the channel? No. Uh, no the channel okay. Really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's on there. Um, is, it, is it on a par with Shirley Ghostman, but the guy thinks that it's genuine? Yeah. Wow. The, he's not a psychic. No, he no, didn't no, claim no. to be but psychic. That level of but he's ridiculous. He's a sensitive. And um, your eyebrow twitched a bit then. Did it? He <laughs> will do. I'm yeah. thinking about Zach Baggins. Wait, do you see him? <laughs> <laughs> you 
you can't not twitch when you look at Zach Baggins. <laughs> right, I'm definitely going to go and watch this. Yeah. Amazing. Go on then, Adam. Um, I've watched quite a few things. I managed to watch um, Valerian and City of a Thousand Planets. Yeah, so did I. Um, I thought it was awesome. Did you? Yeah. I thought it looked amazing. Yeah. Just, you know... A turd can look quite amazing when you roll it in glitter. Can't yeah, it? but the the storyline was exactly sort of what was from the comics. All the bits that I've I wanted were in comics, it, but, and yeah. it was good fun, and it was happy, and it had action, and it had except for the you know genocide at the beginning. But yeah, other than that, yeah, yeah, but that, yeah, 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 but like that's that's the <laughs> drive that. that's the driving point of the story. So yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, you can tell like that the fifth element was basically him wanting to do that years ago and just didn't have the money or know how then. Mm-hmm. And he's kind of managed to pull off doing something now. I think the problem is with it, it's such a standard, obvious, classic story of sci-fi that has been nicked from from for everything from Star Wars through to other stuff now that it just doesn't seem... As interesting as it could be, I think that's that's the main issue. Same as the um, John Carter of Mars, it's the same issue that had. You right. know, everyone saw it and went, "Oh, well, this is kind of like this and this and this," and it's like, yeah, because that's where they got the idea from. The thing is with Valyria, though, is there's so much in it. They could probably yeah. have cut it down quite a lot and had a bit more of a coherent movie. And I'd, Rihanna, yeah. Rihanna, my God, Rihanna, why would you have her in a film? Yeah, she the dance bit. <laughs> Is amazing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah it's just where, fine. yeah, that she is the weak point in the whole film. Her voice as a voiceover of a character doesn't sound genuine enough. It just sounds like Rihanna doing voice work for a animated character. Sounds like me doing voice work for an animated character. Yeah, yeah. Just R- Rihanna honestly. as in the, the pop singer. Star. Yeah, yeah. Oh she's Christ. brilliant in it as a character, and then <laughs> instead of just having her used for one thing. They then carry her on for a while, and you're just kind of like, her voice work's not good enough for this to work. Yeah, yeah. But she, to me, she's the weakest point. Everything else in it's kind of, you know, there's some acting in it that's not brilliant, um, but it's still, I, I still think it was, it was a good film. I don't think the story was incoherent at all. I, managed I wouldn't to say follow it's incoherent. It. It's just that it's interlaced with so many different things going on. You could have easily stretched that out to a couple of films. Yeah, true. Yeah. But then maybe he's thinking people are getting annoyed with trilogies and shit now. So I'll just try he and shove really, it all in one. <laughs> he doesn't really do sequels, does he? No. And when he has done them, they've not been great. Did he do a sequel? He did District 13 Ultimatum, which was a, a sequel to the... First Ooh. District Thirteen. Okay, not seen that. Um, he did. A t- he's done two sequels to Taxi. Oh, uh, Taxi. Um, I forgot and about then that. Okay, one sequel to the American Taxi. Right. Um, yeah, he's done quite a few. He's done remakes of his own stuff for American audiences as I well. Love Taxi. So yeah, the, the original one, not yeah, the American yeah. one. I've not seen the American one. It's awful. You seen the French one? I think I had to see it uh, at school actually. Yeah, I think it was in French subs and stuff. Cool. I think I can't it's remember it being cool alright. Really, be shown at school? Yeah, it was middle school, so I probably have to check it out again. Yeah, fair uh, enough. Yeah, I do. I do like a lot of his films. It is weird that whenever he, like with District Thirteen, he remade it with Paul Walker in, and it's pretty much shot for shot, plus the main French actors playing the same character, uh, yes. and yeah, they just change the storyline. So it's not his sister that they're trying to save from being brutally beaten and kidnapped it's his ex-girlfriend and like tried to make it more sexual and stuff and it was just like this is rubbish but that's not talking about valerian no anyway yeah so yeah you'd, you'd probably recommend it by the sounds of it yeah i'd recommend it to anyone that likes the fifth element or generally likes good light-hearted easy to watch sci-fi that's pretty and has a good enough storyline to keep you slightly interested, I'd say it's it's worth it. I wouldn't say it's cinema breaking for what it does, but I yeah. I'd agree. I think it was yeah. pretty kind of yeah, you know, almost leave your brain at the door. Yeah. Not yeah. worried about like yeah, concentrating on a film too much. I was pretty hung over. Just wanted something easy. Yeah. I think you can look into the storyline more if you wanted to and there are elements within it that are a little bit more deep and meaningful but then you can kind of just watch it for the boom bang run around shoot things spaceships girl man kissing aliens kissing job done 
Cool. Yeah. Other than that, just the regular stuff I've been watching this week. So, yeah. The so regular stuff. Yeah, Star Trek and... Oh, yeah, Star Trek. It's the last one for me this evening. Anyway, last one of the this <coughs> half of the season. Yeah, yeah, because they're doing eight each half, aren't they? So Or the, nine. Oh, that's in the news. We'll cover that in a yeah, little while, but... I'll get confused yeah. by it all. Um, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then suppose me. Is it Yeah, me? what, what, I, you, I what have you it? been consuming? Um, Prisoner in Cell Block 99, which is... Oh, what's for? The old... It's a uh, Vince Vaughn movie. Oh. And it's a fist fighting movie about a guy who basically gets gets um, fucked over on a drug deal and ends up going to prison and for one reason or another has to kind of fight his way through a bunch of people to get to a guy and kill him for his boss. Oh. Otherwise something nasty will happen to a family member. And it Sounds like a really good arcade game. It is yeah. and a I really gar- good arcade I, I game. Guarantee. It's a really bad film. Yeah. I, I was going to say, I guarantee there's people out there going, oh, it's not as good as Dread or The Raid. Well, you know what? <laughs> and it probably isn't, but... <laughs> you can't even put it in the same basket. No. You put it in the same basket as, like, Death Proof and Planet Terror, I think. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. It's a B-movie. Oh, I right. watched that last week, actually. Which one? The Cell Block, uh, Brawl in oh, Cell Block yeah. 99. Oh, Brawl in Cell Block Yeah, yeah I really uh, enjoyed it. What did but I say? Prisoner, prisoner, cell prisoner. Block, which yeah. made yeah, you said prisoner cell block, in cell block. I was probably 99. thinking of prison cell block H. Yeah, so. that, I was. That's why I looked at you funny because I wasn't used to sure. Bring of, me rose yeah. in. That's it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> blast from the past. It belongs on the retro cast. So yeah, what did you think of it, Jim? Uh, it's, it's good. I I, re- I enjoyed it actually. The it's very low budget. Yeah, but it didn't I need love to those be special effects. Uh, the vi- the, that yeah. Yeah, the, the head the crushing, skull crunching, and it's definitely a melon. But I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I thought it was cool. They're they're intentionally bad special effects, aren't they? They're, yeah, they're designed to look like Planet Terror, then like really over the top yeah. bad, rather yeah. than yeah. Okay. But it doesn't try to be too much either. I don't think it's pretty. You know, it, it, there's no like big major. There's no need for any CGI or anything like that. Right. It's just a fighting movie. Yeah, the story's pretty straightforward. Yeah. And He's oh, it's weird, weird to see Vince Vaughn in a serious role. Yeah, yeah. Right. I've not seen him in anything like... What's the war movie with um, the guy from Spider-Man? It's, uh, Andrew Garfield. Uh, the Lost in That Place thing. No, the one where he has to take a load of people over a big cliff face. Oh, I don't know. Damn it, that's going to really annoy me. Ross is probably screaming at his phone <laughs> going, It's this, you dickhead! But yeah. <laughs> We'll come back to it. Doesn't matter. So he was he was playing a serious part in that. He was he was the uh, Simon Garfield's commanding officer. In oh, okay. He was very good. But yeah, this is serious, but with quite a kind of a, a very light tone, isn't it? Really, it's it's got like a a certain tackiness to it, almost tongue in cheek. Yeah. Like. So it's not quite um, Rick, the story of Riccio, and it's not quite Ong back. It's kind of halfway between. There's there's tongue in cheek humour but it's still quite serious yeah 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 I think that's it did you guys like Death Proof don't think I saw it uh, did you not no oh, no well. I didn't Tarantino yeah I didn't like it no no I'm lost on Tarantino though we've talked about what about my... Planet Terror though that was okay okay that's interesting <coughs> yeah because Planet Terror was kind of taking the piss out of a lot of the zombie films I like mm. and kind of having that almost trauma movie edge to it so I quite I quite enjoyed that for what it was but it was still awful fair enough I gotta admit I really really did by quite a long way appreciate Death Proof more than Planet Terror uh, okay but yeah there you go I hear this quite a lot I know that people like Planet Terror a bit more than mm. the Death Proof for some reason gets bad press but I just anyway. I just I just don't like Tarantino stuff anymore he's doing his last movie isn't he good <laughs> We'll cover that next week, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I've not done any research on it for this week, but there was definitely something in the news. Good. But yeah, and I finally got around to watching Gore Verbrinsky's um, Cure for Wellness, which I'd recommend if you like a crazy film about... Which one's that? It's about a... Um, oh, it's got the guy from Valyrian in it, the young right. lad, yeah. whose name escapes me. Yeah. Um, but he basically goes to pick up one of his bosses from a health spa retreat tri- type place out in the, the mountains. I remember this, yeah. You mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, didn't you? It was in yeah. the news, yeah, a couple of, probably a couple of months ago That's now. That's right. 
but yeah, tries to leave the place after not being able to get his boss out of there and has a car crash and ends up being sort of kept there as a prisoner and oh. enforced patient. And it's weird. It's very dark and twisted and there's lots of eels and it's very black. I like eels. I like eels. They're like legless otters. <laughs> yes, they are, Adam. Just like legless otters. With no fur. <laughs> Yeah, shaved legless otters. Oh my lord! But yeah, I, I think I'd recommend it. Actually, I think uh, it was more, more, more of a brain tease than cool. certainly than Brawl in Cell Block ninety nine. Um, yeah, it had us chatting about what the hell was going on after the film for about twenty minutes, which is always a good sign, I think. You know, I suppose if you liked, uh, I don't know, Hammer House of Horrors, that sort of thing. Yeah, back in the day creepy films that just kind of make you go Ooh. I've actually been watching a few of them recently Have My you? Little yeah, Pony they're great they're still great My Little Pony My Little Pony and Care Bears when you feel like that what Ugh. yeah do they yeah is it the Care Bear stare oh fucking weird creatures <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm with you on that they're worse than Teletubbies at least Teletubbies got a TV you can concentrate on the belly <laughs> so you can just forget around about the there rest of it there is a sinister edge with the Care Bears isn't there yeah yeah no one can be that why happy all the fucking time. I was going to say, why do they care so much? Yeah. What the fuck's it got to do with you? Yeah. Sticking your gut in everything. <laughs> staring at shit. You've got a lion as your leader. Fuck that. Just weird. Yeah. Right, what else we got then? What's right. in the news? We better get on with some news. Yeah, anyway. what's going on? Should we hit the horrible stuff first? And um, get it over and done with? Or? I've kind of got a bit of an order here. Oh, okay. So we'll follow your order. Because it's all kind of interlaced oh. quite nicely. Oh. To a degree. There'll be a bit of back and forth but still cool right Thor bloody Ragnarok amazing film as, as we started with that last week we'll start with it again this week is <laughs> it's tramps the competition again at the box office good it's reaching close to 650 million worldwide Fuck already hell. and that's in what 10 days I don't even know what that means but that's a lot of money it is a hell of a lot of money it's already the number 10 top grossing film worldwide of 2017 that's impressive for a two-week run. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's not definitely. bad, is it? There it's seems it's just like constant records being broken, isn't there? Just every, every few months you hear of another film that's broken a record. Well, yeah, true. I mean, it's not it's not going to break any of Marvel's previous records, I don't think. No, no. But we'll see. I, I suppose, actually, it could do, couldn't it? You know, if it if it hit a billion dollars, yeah, then, which in actual fact, it's not that far away from doing. Ah, fuck it, it's going to do that, isn't it? By the time it hits China and everything, yeah, it's going to. So, when was the last time Marvel had a solo movie that broke the billion dollar mark? Probably Captain America Winter Soldier. I don't know if it did. Or Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't think either of those have oh. hit a billion either. Wow. So, yeah. We'll see then. We shall see. But, yeah, I dun, mean, dun, dun, at, dun. at the end of the day, it was up against Daddy's Home 2, <laughs> which has got such bad reviews. Honestly, it's getting the shit. I actually, I must say, I watched the first one because I had nothing to watch one evening, and as you all know on this podcast, I don't sleep very often. So sometimes I watch films at night, and that was the only thing I could find that was like light-hearted and hopefully going to laugh me to sleep. Was it Colin Farrell and Marky Mark, Mark Wahlberg, Wahlberg and Will Ferrell? Not Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a very different <laughs> film. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Yeah. Angry Irish. <laughs> Hang on. Pour Versus Angry coffee. Irish American. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it was... Uh, I watched the first one, and, and it was like a lot of Will Ferrell's movies. His his stuff, to me, is very Colin. hit and miss. Um, yeah, Colin, Colin. Is Colin as well, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it was it had funny moments, but it was it was kind of as bad as Ted and Ted Two. Ugh, I didn't right. even finish Ted Two. No, it's not worth the time. No, I got about <laughs> half an hour in. I was like, nah, that's enough. Just first one was okay, second one just yeah. Oh, I didn't. Seth no. McFarlane, isn't it? Yeah, he's got some explaining to do. Yeah, it's wow. awful. He's only so much you can do with Though, a foul-mouthed Paddington Bear, isn't it? Yeah, really? yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then we say that about uh, Seth McFarlane, but like I've been watching. Um, the Orville and it's probably more like the original sort of first few series of Star Trek than the new Star Trek is. Yeah. It's, it's actually really good. <laughs> You're still watching it, are you? Yeah. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. It gets It's, it's actually getting better. There's a couple of weak episodes but it's, the last couple have been really good. Do you watch Star Trek, Jamie? I did. I don't think I've watched the first four episodes. Of the new one? Yeah, I'm not a Star Trek fan. This is quite... 
Uh, it's quite easy to watch. It's very different, so, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I think they've be. picked, mix, mix, mix and match their favourite so, ideas and styles from the different series, and it. Yeah, it almost feels like a best of. Last yeah. week's seen. one was like the closest I think I've seen to an original series episode. Yeah, yeah. Which was the one where they went to the planet and there was the crystal antenna. Yeah. And the weird... Oh, you've not seen it yet, Jamie. No, it's all right. I forget by the time I watch it anyway, so... <laughs> it's all right. I won't give too much away. Yeah. They all die. No, they don't. <laughs> just the guys in the red shirts. I was no, just going to say it's the red shirts. <laughs> yeah. See, even the wife watches it, so... Cool. I, yeah, I will finish it off. I've been enjoying it. So. My missus is watching it as well, and she's like, you know, we, we've just moved into a new house, and we had no Wi-Fi last week, oh. and she's like, have we got a Star Trek? No, like, oh, <laughs> she was really disappointed. <laughs> well, that's yes. the thing. If, 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 for Star Trek. if you find the new Star Trek easy to watch, I'd recommend the Orville because it's kind of like almost taking the mick out of. Have you seen Galaxy Quest? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's basically Galaxy Quest cross Star Trek. Like they've they've done a real nice mixture of the comedy with the with the sort of standard Star Trek tropes, and it it works. It's all right. It's not. Joke, 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 like normal family guy stuff. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, so Daddy's Home too. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell. And, um, and Kenneth Branagh's Murder on the Orient Express. So those are the only two new films at the box office. So Johnny Depp on a train. Johnny Depp on, well, actual fact. A <laughs> it's like John Dillinger on a train, isn't it? star-studded cast on a train. Yeah, but it's Johnny Depp on a train. Well, see the murderer. I don't know, he's but he's the main person, so you know they're going they're going to make him the main person because he's in it, and that's what they do now with Johnny Depp. If he's in a film, he has to be the focus of everyone's attention. Oh, well, I don't know. Nah. He's had a couple of sort of supporting roles recently. Yeah, but in stuff like Tusk, <laughs> Tusk, and um, I suppose it was only the first of five movies, but the Amazing Beasts and Where to Find Them. Yeah, but what a pile of shit. It's not a pile of shit. It's yeah, a good film. It's Harry Potter connected. It doesn't matter. It's a good film. <laughs> ignore the universe and just ignore everything that's come before and, and give it a bloody good go, mate. It's, yeah. Uh, it's wizards and stuff. It's good not film. my thing. Bloody should be. <laughs> Get your gathering cards out, the Muppet. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah. Fuck those other two movies. And so, yeah, I guess the only thing that can possibly knock it off its top spot Thor Ragnarok, I mean, is uh, Justice League, which is coming this weekend. No. I don't think it will. No? No. Interesting week at the box office. Is anyone here going to go and see Justice League? No. I might do. Yeah? Might do. I, I'd like right. to. I watched Batman vs Superman. Uh, yeah. For all its flaws, I still, it was, I still enjoyed it. I enjoyed it too. You're both apologists, real trouble. aren't you? I have a lot of trouble with these guys. Paul, we've got two apologists. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't force people to watch it because it's a long film, but yeah, yeah, standard yeah. edition was better. It was. But it still made no sense. In places, yeah. definitely. Yeah. But. It makes no sense because you've already like committed to the idea that it doesn't make sense. What? You just need to like just flex <laughs> and, you know, go with the flow, man. I was going just... with the flow the first <laughs> time I watched it and it still made no sense. And then I went with the flow when I watched the extended and it still didn't make any oh, sense. Oh, you have seen both versions? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> you surprised me. <laughs> I made the effort, Chris, <laughs> and I still didn't like it. I really want to like this movie. Yeah, that's how I felt. It's like, I like the Marvel ones. I really want to like a film with Batman in again. No, no. Ben Affleck... He's as bad as George Clooney as a Batman. It just doesn't work. Do you think? Yeah. I, see, I, I liked him as Batman. No. I like him as Batman. No. I like his I don't, jaw. I don't really like him. I like his jaw as Batman. I just don't think he's very good as Bruce Wayne. Do you have trouble with him as an actor generally, Jamie? Mm, I joined him in Pearl Harbor. Right. And I can't you know, I've I've think... Seen that. I, it's okay. It's long. Very more long. Rats. He was um, good in more Rats. Of course, yeah. And it was the one <sighs> similar to more Rats with a church. Dogma. Dogma. Yeah. He was in that yeah. too, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, Chase and Amy. I have yet to see The Accountant. The Accountant's no. very good. Yeah. I was oh God. Yeah, I've got to see that still. But yeah, it's a good one. I enjoyed it. But a lot. it's not, I've got nothing against him. I just, it's the films, I think, the other films that he's been in, I'm just not interested in. Right. Daredevil. But, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the exact yeah. reaction. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Forgotten about that. Oh, dear. Yeah. Most people have. <laughs> I think there's a reason. Yeah, yeah. It was poor. It was. There was there was some and good was ideas and little good moments in it, but they were shrouded by shit. So 
It's difficult to kind of get past that for me. But, yeah. Right, and then we've got a bunch of other DC stuff related then, I suppose, to that. Um, yeah. I'm still recording. Paul's leading the room. I'm doing a week. You've got to play the game when you come back, remember? <laughs> so, um, yeah, DC. So, Jeffrey Dean Morgan as Thomas Wayne in Flashpoint. Any thoughts? Who's Jeffrey Dean Morgan? Oh, the guy that played Batman's or Bruce Wayne's father in Batman v Superman in the cutscene right at the beginning, the flashback He's at the beginning. Currently Honest. Negan as well. Oh yeah, well. it's Negan, Negan and the comedian Dead. from Watchmen. Yeah, the only one of those that I remember is the comedian from Watchmen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, he so, looks a bit Bruce Wayne-y. So. Older. Sort of like evil Batman, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah. It'll be, it'll be interesting. We're all familiar with Flashpoint. So yeah, yeah, yeah. What happens in Flashpoint is the reverse Flash does something to the timeline and makes it so that Barry Allen's never been alive, right? And mm, or is no, he? No, is I think it, Flash no, is when Bruce Flash Wayne goes back and saves his mum, isn't it? Say again. F- Flash, Flash goes back and saves his mum. Ah, uh, that's it. Yeah. But <clears throat> so when he's going, is it when he's going back or when he returns again? There's the issue. I think it's when he returns. It's been a while since I've read it, to be honest. Yeah, I've only seen the animated version. Oh, okay. Uh, But, yeah, anyway, so at some point or another, we end up with a very different Batman. It's like an alternate version of the timeline. So you've got uh, Batman is basically Bruce Wayne's dad rather than Bruce Wayne. Yeah, Um, and he uses guns. Yeah, yeah. So that's the character we're talking about, Jeffrey Dean Dean Morgan playing. Cool. So I'd, I'd be up for that. Uh, to, to be honest, if, Mar- if if DC just went and did different films of different stories from the DC universe and just all of those films were completely uncanonical with each other, so that they did Flashpoint and they did a version where they used the Flash from one of the other films and he goes back in time and changes the timeline and you have all the evil versions of the heroes and then they go and do another film that's one of the other stories, I'm well up for it. It's whether or not they try and then tie it into the main DC universe fully and make it make sense. That's but I what think I that's worry. what they're intending to do, is incorporate yeah. Flashpoint into the... It's not called the DCEU anymore, is it? Apparently that's not actually a thing. That's because it's Dick You. <laughs> dick You. Oh, Dick You. Oh. <laughs> dick You. Is oh. it something to do with Kevin Spacey then? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Paul. Good input. Good piss. Yeah, yeah. Nice. First nice. class. Nice urination. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice new toilet, that. So well, I flushed it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was the least I could do, really. <laughs> um, what were we saying? So, Batman... Yeah, so... Oh, yeah. It could, be, it could be good. Obviously, I'm worried whether they integrate it into the, the bigger DC universe properly. But then I don't know. What is it called, then, if it's not DCEU, then? What are um, they calling it now? There isn't a term for it. But it's it's just that the JS around about a month ago, Warner Brothers turned around and said, "Well, you know what? We didn't actually coin that phrase. It was just some journalist used it once, and you've all picked it up. So it's not the DC EU." Well, then they should shut up and just go with it. If the fans want to call it that, yeah, then dick, dick you, <laughs> dick you, DC EU people, <laughs> fucking knobs. So yeah, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. He's definitely been spoken to about the role because uh, he kind of got outed on a on a chat show Ooh. Uh, the other day so it could happen we will see closer to Kevin Spacey than we thought mm. being outed on a chat show yeah well generally just being outed <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say do you know something I know Has something happened on bloody Stephen Colbert or something like that no not yet no. <laughs> right Batman in the Arrowverse Jamie you watch Arrow and Flash yeah I'm pretty up to date uh, well up to date Completely in the minute. So, uh, Bruce Wayne has been mentioned. Yeah, very brief, but like one episode. Right. So Apparently, they're going to bring him in as a character. But S- Bruce Wayne or Batman? Well, one and one and the same, I suppose. Oh, they are going to do Batman then, because Gotham don't have the rights to do Batman and aren't allowed. Right. Ah, I didn't know. Um, that. Yeah, which is why I've never got past the first series because it seems pointless but it's shit anyway, I don't know yeah. if I don't know because Su- Supergirl they said they weren't going to be allowed to do Superman but they've now had someone play Superman yeah. in it three times yeah. um, Flash I think I don't know if they've ever been told they couldn't have Batman or Superman in it there's never been any well, I'm not sure not that I, I know of anything. yeah but Batman might be used as like a, a nemesis like an anti-hero type uh, okay, character yeah. who'll come in and say oi Arrow 
I don't know what Pack you're doing. In, yeah. Sort your shit out. And uh, yeah, so there'd be some sort of conflict. It'd be interesting, interesting to see what happens. So I watch Flash and I watch Supergirl. I've given up with DC's Legends of Tomorrow because yeah. it's, it's just taking up too much time for other stuff. But Arrow, I've never never really got on with but I do watch it when they do the crossovers and there is a big crossover coming soon so maybe it's linked to that hopefully yeah, yeah that might be what they're doing it might be just a four four episode uh, four I think it's like a four day yeah like yeah four day event. But yeah so it basically it's one episode properties. of each yes yeah, DC's Legends of Tomorrow Supergirl Flash and, Flash and Arrow I don't know which order it'll be in but yeah I think it usually just does it uh, it's usually Arrow a uh, Flash and Arrow and right. then I'm, I think so the order they come out on TV on the same then. day? Yeah, one's sure. after the other on TV, so... so are they 45 minute it. episodes? Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's going to oh, be... Oh, Supergirl, then Flash, because normally at the end of Supergirl it says up next Flash. They're on the same uh, night. Okay, yeah. yeah. And then it'll be the other two. So that'll be three hours of stuff. Four. Yeah, four hours of stuff. Almost four hours, because, yeah. 45 minutes. Each time. one's 45 to 55 minutes, depending on... Right. They do change slightly sometimes. Mm. Lots of stuff to consume. Yeah. So while we're on DC, Wonder Woman star Gal Gadot has yeah. said that she won't return for the sequel if Brett Ratner remains involved with the franchise. Now, because he's obviously been, as, as you said earlier on, I think, Adam, he's been ousted for some pretty indecent behaviour towards yeah. females in the movie industry. She is refusing to sign on for another solo film unless Ratner and his company are completely cut out of the franchise financially. Yeah. That's a pretty solid threat, I think. Uh, just to be devil's advocate, I think it's a bit unfair to all the other people involved in his company who haven't done anything wrong. Well, For her to say the whole company, maybe he should just be cut off from getting any money from anything to do with these films now. Because his company is also linked to... I've got it written down here, actually. Uh, Aquaman, Ready Player One, The Disaster Artist, Flashpoint, The Lego Movie 2, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, Shazam, The Billionaire, Bryce Races, Justice League 2, Cyborg, Green Lantern Corps, and others. Wow. So that's a lot of films they've got to cut that company out of. That's a lot of people they're not making money who are below him that had nothing to do with the horrible things he's done. So just like say, as Devil's Advocate, I'm not disagreeing or agreeing, that is quite harsh for those other people. Is that necessarily the right way to do it? I know she's trying to hit him where it hurts his wallet because that's how you deal with people of that much power. I agree with her. He shouldn't be involved. But then also, again, they are accusations at the moment. You've got We haven't got to that point where there's any sort of proof or... Nothing particularly solid other no. than <clears throat> there were some pretty nasty things said by uh, Ellen Page... About him being homophobic. Oh, uh, and outing her on the set, like in front of other people. Oh, really? When she hadn't really decided to be oh, publicly I didn't know open that. about being gay. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. That's harsh. That's very harsh. But then also, it kind of seems quite hypocritical of Gal Gadot from, again, being devil's advocate, for the fact that um, she's just done Justice League and Ben Affleck's had five people come forward saying that he has been, he has sexually harassed them. Oh, really? But she's not said anything about working with him and that she doesn't want to be in a film with him again. So it's interesting that she's... Has that happened recently as well? Yeah, yeah. Last, 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 thing, last few it? weeks and a few years ago there was one and then recently there's been three or four. Mm. And, it, and I do find that interesting that she's saying I don't want to work with this guy and make sure he doesn't get money out of everything. But then also for him to be outed from the situation... Warner Brothers has got to pay him off to get him out of the contract. So either way, he's going to make money. Yeah. So it kind of seems like, as, although it's a good ultimatum f from her point of view and for the the cause, that's a lot of money that the he's cause? still going to get. What yeah. have they got to do with it? <laughs> Fuck all I <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's only one male member, so uh, it might just be the drummer. <laughs> But yeah, like, do you know what I mean? Like, there's that whole thing of like he's going to make money either way, and she's not said anything about working with someone else who's also been accused of doing stuff. So like, I I just find in the whole thing very confusing with Hollywood now. I, I there's so much of it every day. Someone else has um, been there's accusations against someone else for doing something, and 
if these people have done what these people are saying, that's fucking horrible. Until obviously there's certain proof and stuff, like there has been with Harvey Weinstein, there's various stuff that's come out now that's shown in contracts and stuff that there was mm. unnamed things to do to get themselves parts and stuff like that and it's just not written down what it is. It just has a blank space left of unnamed whatever. Yeah. Um but yeah, she's saying she don't want to work with this guy, but then she's still working with Ben Affleck. That is weird. It's very odd. So what do you reckon then guys? Paul, Jamie, should they do something a bit more like they're doing with Kevin Spacey and just cutting him out? See this is it. They've, they've the completely refilmed entire sections, haven't they? It's quite Impressive, really. It's going to be quite a clever bit to. of editing, that. Yeah. Yeah. Actually. yeah. But they've, they were talking about using similar techniques to what they've used previously in films like Gladiator and things like that, wasn't it? Where they wanted to include somebody that had just yeah, died. Yeah, just died. <laughs> but then yeah. that's the thing with that. You can do that because it's just one of the actors in it and you can take him out and he won't get any money and you cut him I off. I know what you're saying. But with Brat Retner, he's... He's the director. Brett Ratner, he's, even, yeah. yeah. He's he's one of the producers. He's His company have got money involved in all these he films. Takes the entire project. to get him and yeah. his company out is going to cost Warner Brothers shit loads of money because I can't just chuck him out and go sorry because they've got a contract so yeah. they're going to have to pay him one way or the other yeah. that's, that's the disturbing thing so either way he'll sit around and do nothing and get a load of money it's crazy <laughs> uh, Hollywood at the minute it's, it's just that one big chain reaction it is it's, I don't know I, I, oh, it's just so much wrong with all of it they thought the BBC just was bad when three or four people got done for dodginess but this the Hollywood's just gone we're not going to go down that route. There's there's yeah. news on that this week as well. But yeah, the thing that it gets that me. I mean, hasn't it always been the in? Well, not just the in joke. It's a common joke, isn't it? Where I mean, people have always said, "Oh, you know, what's he done to get in that role? Or what's she done to get in that yeah, role?" Yeah. There's always been this sort of sort of a stigma and, and, and well, an expectation that that this thing goes on high up in play in, in big business in in Hollywood in particular. And it's, I don't know, it's, it's strange that it's always been accepted as, as some sort of, you know, in the back of everyone's mind, but now that things are starting to actually come out, that it's all so much of a shocker. And yeah. it's, it's shocking some of the people. You, I mean, some of the people that have been mentioned are, 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 have shocked me, the names, yeah. but they're not the people you would totally expect straight away. But, I mean, it's... It's, it's It'd not be interesting to see what Uma Thurman thinks because she sort of said, "I'm too angry to talk about it at the moment. Right. But when I feel comfortable, I will, I will share what I think." And that's uh, that to me shows that obviously there is there has been stuff going on, and obviously if there's stuff written into contracts, that means the person doing whatever the thing is, although the person's in a position of power, they've agreed to it. So where where does the line draw on, like, sh- sh- do you just say, like, stop doing that now? Like, if you're in Hollywood now, you can't do that anymore. That's not okay. Or do you go, well, if it's in, written into a contract and they're okay with it, you allow it? Like, like obviously, rape compared to a bit of a grope compared to saying something dirty to someone are all very different things. And it's, it's just become I, I horrendous. Don't, I don't know where it'd be written into a contract where a certain amount of lewd conduct would be acceptable though I, mean, I know there yeah. is yeah, really? yeah yeah I've been reading reading articles where there's um they've got a certain amount bits of taken from contracts and it says I can't think of the word in right now but things like um extra um f- uh, not facilitation like basically describing like you will do something above and beyond the call of what it is you're here to do to keep the position or to be able to change the lines if you want to change your lines. That was the thing with Ellen Page, with her situation, where she was out, out, it was on the set of X-Men. Yeah. So uh, after that happened, she was told that she had to wear a T-shirt that said Team Ratner on it. Yeah. And she basically said, look, I'm not on your fucking team and stormed off the set. Yeah. And then a bunch of people came and knocked on her door and said look you can't speak to him like that and she was an 18 year old girl with not too much power at the time yeah, so yeah. she was just absolutely just mortified by the situation that's horrible yeah uh but it's 
that sounds a lot like what you're saying. Yes, yeah, part. It's are, almost part of the contract. By you the know, it's if it's if she's told she has to wear it, even if she's not happy about something that he's done, if it's part of the contract to say that you will just put up with and do whatever it is you need to do to get the film done, like <coughs> well, and on that's, the subject, that's a disgusting thing, isn't it? The latest one is Steven Seagal. Ah, uh, yes. Did yeah. No, we've not heard about this, but yeah. This is a belter, allegedly a um, a female actress who or actor um, who was on the final auditions um, for a, a role in one of his um, recent movies. Um, he, he basically invited her into his office and said it's important that we have as much off-screen chemistry as we do on-screen chemistry. And then he proceeded to unzip his leather trousers and pull them down. Right. Yeah. So she did a runner, yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think she got the part. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, you can. Um, yeah, that's. The, I, I don't know the name of the like the the the, act, the, the lady who um, came forward with this story. Um, I'm sure it's, sure it's out there if anybody wants to look yeah. it up. But these since she's come forward, several other allegations been made against. And then him. this is the thing as well. How how do you then know at this point? And again, I'm just as devil's advocate because it's it's something that's talked about, but people seem to be talking very much one-sided about it. How many of these accusations against each person that are coming up are genuine? And yeah, how many is, are yeah, people jumping on the well. bandwagon to try and think that they'll make money out of it? Or that, just damage someone's or, career. Yeah, or exactly, or someone like they that. don't like that yeah. they had a bit of a, a bad time with. Not necessarily with. in a sexual way, yeah. just had a bad time with and didn't get on with and want to, you yeah. know... There's something very... I said about not dragging the BBC into this conversation. There's something very, very, very much related to that uh, with the Jimmy Savile case this week. Oh, right. So just go and read the news. Yeah. Go yeah. and check it out. No, there. I didn't know about that, so I will check that out. Yeah. yeah. Have we got a way of moving on to some happier news yes. now? <laughs> yes, we have. Yay. So more DC stuff, because that's where all this started. Oh. Shazam. We've got a, a, an actor to play the young Billy Batson, which is good. Is it Billy Elliot? No. Oh, he'd be a man now, wouldn't he? <laughs> It's uh, a young lad called Andy Mack. Yeah, you're right. He would be a man now. He is a man. I saw him in another film just recently. Jumper. Was he in Jumper? He yeah. was, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. What was the one I saw him in? Cardigan. Oh, yeah. It was <laughs> the sequel. <laughs> Cardigan. <laughs> Christmas Jumper. <laughs> it was the one about the embassy siege by the SAS. Oh. In the UK. I can't remember what it's called. Well, like a, oh, I don't a, know. a film about that whole incident. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know the it's name of the good. film, but I, I, yeah, I know the incident. It was quite famous, wasn't it? It might be called Seven Days or something like that. Cool. I'll we'll have to give that a watch. Go and find it at home. Google it. Go it's actually a film. documentary, an hour-long documentary about the entire siege, and it's fascinating. It's interviews with the, with the guys who were actually there, who did the mission. Is right. that who's, who dares wins? Is that, that that one? Is that what it's called? No, that's the documentary about uh, the Trotter family. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Is it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so... This kid's name is Asher Angel. Right. Uh, the guy that's going to play play Billy Batson. <laughs> Billy Batson. Sorry. Damn bloody double B names. Happens a lot in comic books. In the early days, yeah. <laughs> uh, he's in a TV s- series called Andy Mack, and he plays a character called Jonah Beck, if that means anything to any of you. Right. Uh, Andy Mack's a contemporary of coming-of-age story about a girl trying to determine where she fits in. Yeah, whatever. I swear <laughs> so, that was the name of a show from the 80s where a girl could turn into a puddle of water because she got t- covered in toxic waste, Ale- Alex Mack. Do you know well, that, that Nickelodeon ring a bell? I seem to remember that. Yeah, like Nickelodeon or something. And it was a girl who could turn into liquid and go under doors and shit. That so does ring a bell. Yeah. It's not that one. Okay. okay. Shame. That's a shame. Yeah. They should bring that back. But anyway, he looks <laughs> fitting for the part. You cool. know, go and have a look at photos. They're out there somewhere. She's basically just a young boy. Yeah, I suppose it's not too important. No, it's right. I don't don't know how much of the film is going to be him. Hopefully not too much. To be fair. (laughs) Be an origin story though, won't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But there's going to be quite a lot of um, Black Black Adam? Black Adam, yeah. Yeah, Black Adam in it. So, well, I assume there's going to be quite a lot of Black Adam because it's The Rock. So, well, even if there's just one scene, that's quite a lot of the rock to put on camera. Yeah, so, <laughs> takes up a lot of the screen. screen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's about three or four cameras, isn't it? And then have to do it, you know, super wide screen. Yeah, you have to put two or three tellies together. Yeah, to get the full. I, I found out the other day as well. His stunt double, the rock stunt double, was actually his cousin. That's why he looks just like him. Brilliant. Oh wow, that's yeah. quite handy. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know how what 
what could you use to replace the rock? I don't, an ostrich egg or something? I don't <laughs> on some bloke's shoulders? I don't know. No idea. <laughs> um, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Was that a dad joke? I it was don't too know surreal what that was. Like, that was just too that surreal. That was like Reeves and Mortimer with a dabbling <laughs> of Chris uh, uh, Chris Morris on top. Uh, the uh, <laughs> the um, the trailer for while well, we're talking about the Rock, the trailer for Rampage could well be coming with the Justice League this weekend. Is that the movie that's based on the video game? Yeah. Uh, be interesting to what they do with it. I don't uh, understand how they're going to make an actual yeah. film out of it. I'm impressed that they've gotten to the stage where they're saying, okay, we're, we're kind of ready to release a trailer. Uh, we've not seen any like footage or shots or anything. Yeah, we've it's not seen it's like all graphics. So there's no chance of them catching them on set, is there? <laughs> what are we talking about? Because I, I totally missed it. All I heard was coming, coming with the <laughs> Justice League. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, Christ, imagine that one. <laughs> um, the Rampage movie. Rampage. So, oh yeah, I remember as we were joking about this a little while back, weren't we? Yeah. And uh, it's actually going ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Oh, no, we're, at, we're at trailer stage. Wow. wow. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah, it's the sort of film though, imagine if they're, even if it's got real people in it fighting giant beasts attacking the city, it's probably all a lot of green screen and yeah, in yeah. studios, so there's probably not been anything leaked because there's nothing to really sort of show, but we'll see. We'll see. Might all be cartoon. If you don't know what Rampage is at home, it's a, a computer game where it was a single screen and there were like three buildings and you could play as either a giant lizard, a giant Lizzie the lizard, gorilla, Ralph the werewolf, and yeah, and and you had to smash the buildings up and the player that got the most windows smashed out of I the building. Don't think you could eat people. Oh yeah, yeah. could yeah. you eat people? Yeah, no. you could. You pull them you out of the windows and oh. some bunch of more. Okay, but then like. You know, helicopters come along and shoot you and stuff. Yeah, and you can punch them out the game air of survival. And, <coughs> and I don't who wins. Is it the one that gets the most points, or is it the one that basically survives yeah, the, the one who like destroys the most of the building, yeah. eats the most people, and survives the longest? Yeah. The point being, it's a very simple game. Yeah. But um, fun, isn't it? Do we know the premise of the movie? Does, does anyone remember? I think it, I, I think you brought it up, and I raised the point that the premise of the game was a far better story uh. than the one they've come <laughs> up with for the whole movie. So, so yeah, the premise is then to that. there's a, a satellite where they're doing tests on animals oh, yeah. to make super... Yeah, and it accidentally makes giant creatures. Sort. So we'll probably get a giant hamster at the beginning and, and crash, they'll kill that off. It crashes into a city. I think yeah. it's New York. Yeah. It always is. Yeah. Hey, Presto, you've got a movie with The Rock. Can't be anywhere near as bad as Battleship or Doom or any of the other computer game or board game films they've tried to make <laughs> recently. We'll see. Tetris to come soon. Oh. It's ding, happening. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> it's crazy. Right, so Disney buying twenty first century Fox. Um they've oh, already said that. that's not happening now. they it's not moving forward yeah. at the moment, but they say it's still not completely off the table. Do you know what? Fucking let them. Let them do it. Yeah, just, just, think. just let Disney absorb all of the companies that all own the them. Marvel properties. And then that way we can have a proper like Avengers Civil War and have the Fantastic Four involved and Spider-Man and the X-Men, how it should be. There is that, but what do you reckon, Jamie? Can they handle six Marvel movies a year? Uh, if they, is it the one studio that do all the films? Yeah. All the, I don't know. It's... I don't, wouldn't want to ruin anything. That's a lot of balls to juggle, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah but then they're looking at X-Men and Fantastic Four yeah. thrown into what they're yeah. doing already. Yeah, But they'll no. still do a better job than, they do better than job Sony than Fox. and yeah. Fox are doing at the moment. Come so. on, Chris, it's Hollywood. It's all about juggling balls these days. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. In your mouth. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. But no, yeah, I think, I think we should just let Disney do it. We should let them absorb everything. You know, we're already in a we're already in a world where E. T., Indiana Jones, the Guardians of the Galaxy and Star Wars could technically cross over if they wanted to. Why not just bring the actual properties that belong together back together? Yeah. Get Fantastic Four in there, get get um X Men back, redo the X Men, get better actors, get better better storylines, send them out to fucking space. Yeah, damn right. When X Men was good. <laughs> And what the fuck, like, 
Why have we not got a Captain Britain TV series yet? Is that supposed to be happening? No, but it should. I've like, heard rumours. Captain Britain TV yeah. show. It'd be all right, wouldn't it? I heard something. Disney and Marvel should turn around to the BBC and go, right, we're going to do a series with you, Ameri- BBC America or BBC Worldwide. We're going to do a Captain Britain series set in Britain about MI13 with all the characters you like, starting with Captain Britain and his origin story as a one-off movie and then a TV series to carry it on. I want to see an Iceman and Firestar. Yeah. Doing a cameo somewhere, that'd be yeah, amazing. Love those characters. Especially the fact they're new. Do you remember Spider Man and Friends, Jamie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. I shared a link to the Facebook page. Yes, ah, she did. Uh, yes. Jessica Jones taking photos of uh, <laughs> Spider Man and oh, Iceman. Nice Man. Yeah. Copping off with each other. <laughs> right. Um, Deadpool creator Rob Liefeld has publicly urged 20th Century Fox to stop talking to Disney about the potential sale. Kind of word on the street is that he's worried about them watering down stuff. Because if Disney get hold of the Deadpool franchise, for instance. Yeah, like there are certain ones like Deadpool should just stay with with Fox because they they did that justice. Yep. The X-Men films haven't done them justice since, well, they've never done them justice. So they should just give them back. (laughs) I'll give you a quick rundown of the franchises that, that 21st Century Fox own. Alien, Alien vs. Predator, American Dad, Avatar, Die Hard, Doctor Doolittle, Family Guy, The Fly, Futurama, Goosebumps, Home Alone, Ice Age, ID4, MASH, The Omen, Planet of the Apes, Predator, The Simpsons, Star Wars, The X-Files and The X-Men movies. Star Wars? Yeah, they own the distribution rights for the original movie, Uh still worldwide. Yeah. I didn't know Just that. that one original movie. Wow. Which is why, since Disney took over, there's not been a Disney-made um, like Blu-ray box set yeah. of all of the Star Wars films. So, it it makes a hell of a lot of sense that, that, that Disney would want to soak them up. And a lot of those franchises or properties aren't as good as they were when they started because I think Fox are pushing to do certain things and do things a certain way and in my eyes that it, it doesn't really work no fair enough like you know like even like things like simpsons it's just nowhere near as good as it was it needs to stop it's just not fresh anymore is it it's just i, d- I don't know how it's still going i i stopped watching properly after about season six or seven and since then like i will if someone's watching it and it's a new episode, I'll sit and watch it. But I will now just wait until someone goes, you've really got to see this episode, it's really good. And now I'll probably watch maybe one or two episodes of series, if that. I've not seen any for years. Yeah. No, so you catch it on the telly every now and again, and it's just like that. You know, what's for dinner? It's beans on toast. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I know I'll eat it. I know I won't mind it that much. But it's I'm gonna it's get not the worst thing, afterwards. But, but fuck, I'll feel bad afterwards. Yeah. And it's just, oh, it's, oh. And that's what it feels like to me. It feels yeah. like beans on toast. Just fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Try harder. Related news, though. Hasbro is trying to buy a Mattel pool. That might interest you. Really? In actual fact, you as well, Jamie. You're, you're involved in the toy industry. Yeah, yeah. That, so a bit, bit, bit strange. I don't know. I don't know how that works. work. There's, there must be a lot of competition between the two of them. Yeah, well, one of them owns the rights for distribution and sale of DC toys, and the other one owns Marvel. Marvel. Yeah, yeah. So if you had then one company controlling both... That's a nice toy to have in your in your you, toy box, isn't it? I mean, a lot of the Mattel toys are pretty bad anyway. Right. So, so the Hasbro so, though, the Marvel Hasbro, the Legends stuff at the minute isn't as good as they yeah, used to the be. Yeah, the six-inch Legends, like Marvel Legends figures, are the worst quality they've been in a long time. And a lot of the DC six-inch figures I've looked at recently um, by Mattel are also. It's almost like. They've come from exactly the same factory and exactly the same moulds with bits well added on. And that, that's the thing. Like I've I, I got some Mattel Ghostbuster, six-inch Ghostbusters. Oh, uh, yeah, I've got them, yeah. The ones that come with the sign pieces, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, the quality of them is fucking shocking for Mattel. And I've got the original, like, release Ghostbuster figures mm. they did, and they're brilliant. But in the last ten years, the quality of both companies has gone so low that... I've just stopped collecting action figures now unless I can find them really fucking cheap. Is that a sign of the times, though? Is it a case that companies don't really take action figures seriously unless you're buying, like, a Black Series figure or something like that? Yeah, but even some of them are 
badly made. Yeah, some of the black tea stuff isn't good. Yeah. Right. Um, the I think it's figure. all money. If the more you pay, the better stuff you get. Right, I mean, yeah. there's companies out there like Bandai that do SH figure art stuff. Oh, they're amazing. And it's just incredible. But you're looking at forty pounds upwards for a figure. Right. Um, the Bruce Lee figure I said about a while oh, yeah, ago yeah. is is that one figure of those. is amazing. Yeah. So are they get they're heading to the sort of quality that McFarlane toys do, or far superior? Superior to that? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. McFarlane sort of their main is, is sort of statuette stuff. Yeah. I think that's the, you know the way they. Um, the design stuff for the statues where I don't know there's figure arts there's loads of third party companies as well now that do their own figures right yeah. um, but it's all just just big big money like cause, yeah because the Bandai stuff like that you're saying about the they're fully articulated like more articulated than the Mattel or the Hasbro figures and of a better quality so you attention to detail as well and, yeah. the, and the, they love their die cast don't they yeah yeah and it's just have you seen the latest? Um, you'd like this, Jamie. It's uh, Mecha Godzilla. No, right, I've not me- seen that. It's Mecha, Mecha Godzilla, Godzilla really poseable. Re- you yeah. can also, but he transforms into three different vehicles from the movie. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It, it detaches in terms of, th- and the the detail in it is just incredible. But now you're looking at a price ticket of about 180 dollars, right? Which is, I mean, this is a, it's it's a whole other league. But, but then still. this this is what gets me, like. Ten years ago, a Marvel Legends six inch figure would yep. have cost you seven ninety nine yep. and the quality was four times yep. what it is now. Yeah. And yeah, you're paying twenty five quid it now. It doesn't match the rate of inflation, does it? No. So I don't see that's an argument. I think they're trying something on a little bit there. I just think they're taking the piss. I think as time's gone on, more people have started collecting and they've just bumped the money up profit. Yeah. But if you look at the Toy Biz stuff that did the original Marvel stuff. Yeah, yeah. Toy Biz were like, amazing. Who are the company that are knocking out all the low end figures for like I saw some Back to the Future ones at Comic Con for instance and Is it the Funko <gasps> stuff? Yeah, the Funko Is company. Like They've done the Rick and Morty figures and the pot vinyl pops and they do um a lot of the Stranger Things yeah, the like three quarter 80 style three quarter inch yeah, stuff. Where they've yeah. got four points of articulation, but yeah. they look quite good. Okay. So but they're, even them, they're it's cheap materials. They just do a better job with those cheap materials I'm than quite other companies. I saw some Firefly figures as well at the Comic yeah. Con. That was obviously so the same uh, company, I thought. The reaction yeah. stuff, isn't it, I think? Is it reaction? Yeah. Reactions. Yeah, it's funko, but it's reactions. Yeah. 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 Now, I'm surprised that none of these companies have jumped on Valyrian, in honesty. Yeah. Because, uh, my God, if well, if the movie did well... Yeah, yeah, this is the problem, be isn't it? gold mine because there's so many characters yeah. in it. And so many different species. You could yeah. release like a pack of four of this species and four of this species as little sets and get four of the little robot dudes and two of the tall aliens or whatever. It's probably just a matter of time. Reactions, are, are, they're covering all the... But they're basically covering all the franchises that nobody else is touching at the moment. Yeah. The people but they're, doing, they're doing them slower and behind, yeah, aren't yeah, they? They're yeah. not chucking it out. That's the thing with the Hasbro and the Patels. They're chucking everything out before the films happen Yeah, yeah. as part of the marketing. But they're, they're doing it so yeah. cheap. It's, it's so do you think they do it as cheap as possible, as far away from sort of, the, let's say, um, properties with a high price tag yeah. as possible. And then if something takes, then they'll increase the, the quality. Yeah. Something like that. I don't even think they increase the quality once something does take. I think they just... It's it's that, that whole thing of... Um, Mattel and Hasbro are just out to make shit loads of money now. I don't know who's taken over those companies recently, but like I say, last 10 years, the quality's dropped and the price is, like I say, seven ninety nine ten 10 years ago for a figure. At the rate of inflation, a figure should be approximately 15, 16 quid now, but it's not. It's 25 quid upwards for a Marvel Legends six inch figure that's the less, a, a quarter of the quality of what it was 10 years ago. Right. Like Even the ones back in the eighties were really good quality, weren't they? Yeah, they were yeah. amazing. Yeah, and they were cheap as chips compared to the prices now. Uh, when you look at inflation and what money was worth then, it just doesn't make any sense. Mm. There you I go. totally agree. But I just like all that sort of stuff. Sorry, Jamie. I, was I think they've just all tagged on as a collector's market now. Yeah, mm. because I mean, I, I'm on a couple of pages on Facebook, and there's hundreds of people on there. I, I think thing is where it's, it's more socially acceptable now. Yeah, yeah, and there is that. I think they just play on it. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. If you're interested in all that sort of thing, you might like our other podcast on this Thursday, which is going to be all about Transformers and the, and the history of Transformers. We already said that at the beginning, but, you know, advertising. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
What else have we got? We said uh, we mentioned Deadpool a little while ago. Oh yeah. yeah. There's been poster news, Paul. There's been a first Hooray. official poster <gasps> for Deadpool two, confirming a few characters, which is quite nice. Did you see Deadpool, Jamie? I uh, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. You're looking forward to a sequel? Yeah, it's, it'd be interesting to see what they do with Cable. Yeah, yeah. Is, it, is it the poster with the Thanksgiving? That's right. Yeah. yeah. So they're all crowded around a, a Thanksgiving turkey. And it's, um, <laughs> it's uh, of course, Deadpool and Cable. Domino. As he beats his domino, yeah. And TJ Miller. Yeah. Brianna Hildebrand, who's the girl that's, that played Neg- Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Oh, yeah. Corinne Sony, Dopinder, the, the taxi driver. Yeah. He's there. Leslie Uggams, who plays Blind Al. And Stefan Kapacic, who plays Colossus, apparently. Oh. Or at least... Voices him. Oh, well, uh, yeah. Yeah, voices him. Uh, look at the credits for Deadpool. That's weird, because there's three people. Yeah, one that's probably doing the motion capture, one that's probably... Doing the face. Playing the, the face, and yeah. one that's doing the voice. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know which one it is. That's just the one I picked out of the bag. So <laughs> <laughs> He's part of him. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's a, like a multi-transformer con or something. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a 33% chance of not being lynched on YouTube. <laughs> So, yeah. Um, in related news, though, there's some quite clever promotional stuff going on for, for the movie. Uh, you guys must have seen the promotional stuff that was happening for the first one. So oh, it was amazing. Crazy just billboards They did such things. a good good job, especially with Ryan Reynolds. Just, just like nice alternate ways to promote a movie, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, jumping into other people's trailers and stuff like that <laughs> as well, even from companies that weren't 20th Century Fox. Yeah. Like, they allowed him to jump into their trailers and stuff which I think is great That's cool. you know like they obviously paid him money to do it but yeah, sure. you know like obviously made it worthwhile anyway yeah. look Deadpool is featuring in this month's edition of Good Housekeeping <laughs> <laughs> brilliant <laughs> so there's a whole uh, like a special um, basically centred around Wade Wilson and his character uh, not the most natural of combinations you might think but uh, yeah it, it, it seems like it's pretty funny uh, there's there's things like recipes for uh, D's spicy nuts, for instance, <laughs> in there, of course, <laughs> and uh, instructions on how to carve a chicken, I think, with a katana. Amazing. <laughs> things like that. So if you can get yourself a copy of Good Housekeeping, it might well be worth a read. This is the thing. What a great way. For how Housekeeping probably asked them to do it. Like, you know, if you if we let you have some sort of, like, advert in here... That will help get an audience that would never buy our magazine normally yeah, to yeah. come and, you know. It's a clever tactic. Nicely done. So, yeah, okay, moving on. Um, Star Wars, more Star Wars. Oh. The Last Jedi's Ryan Johnson, who is the guy that, as it happens, directed Looper, that we right. mentioned earlier, and Brick, if you guys have ever seen Brick. Nope. No. It's quite a good high school kind of crime drama. You should go and check it out. But, yeah, he's been hired by Disney to continue with the... Star Wars franchise. Now, I said earlier, uh, I said last week about the fact that they had confirmed that they're going to continue the saga with episodes, what's that going to be? 11, 12, and 13? I think so, yeah. Hang on, where are we? 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, it'll be. So, yeah, uh, Ryan Johnson has been brought on board to create the trilogy but direct the first one. Wow. Is that all right? I don't know. Mm. I'll finish this one first, I suppose. Yeah. I, I, we haven't I, even had the second part of this trilogy yet, and they're already talking about the next one. Apparently, lot. Disney are very happy with it. Are they? Well, he's probably doing what he's told, isn't he? You know, he's not trying to make it something outside of the typical... Who's doing the second one again? This guy. Ryan, oh, he is doing Ryan episode Johnson. like eight? Episode seven. Uh, in... No, sorry, eight. Yeah, yeah. you're right. I, I just, I don't know anymore. <laughs> like, Force Awakens was good fun. I quite enjoyed it. I don't have as much problems with it as other people. I'll probably enjoy the next one. But I don't know if we need Star Wars to be like Marvel and be every year we've got a film. I don't know if they should just do some and then have three years break, four years break, and give people a chance to enjoy what they've had and then do some more. Are they shooting for one a year or two a year at the moment? I think it might be two. No, it's one a year, isn't it? Is it? So yeah, has it been two years every, since seven? Every other year oh, is a, an episode yes. and the years in between are the stories. Yeah, we did Rogue One but last year, didn't I'd we? rather we get one every other year and they just don't bother doing the Han Solo movies and the 
Obi-Wan solo movies. I, I'd rather just the story and just do it every couple of years. It gives people a chance to actually really get excited and enjoy it rather than getting disappointed by something in between <laughs> every time. <laughs> Have you seen Rogue One yet, Paul? No. Hey. It's, a, it's a Vietnam War film, but That's in wrong. Star Wars oh, universe, so, yeah. universe. Have you seen it, Jamie? I quite like yeah, it. Yeah, it's okay. I yeah. watched um, it again the other night. I struggled with it the second time around. Yeah? I don't know why. I just... I enjoyed it. I think just as much the second time around. I actually sat sat and watched the, the last 45 minutes with the missus, and we just... You know, spoke about it afterwards, and we're like, you know, that's not a bad film. It's no. really not. A, Doesn't make any sense if you haven't seen any other Star Wars. Well, film. maybe it's completely out of context, but and there's no reason for any of it happening. But it's if more. You haven't watched the others, but I like it. But it's more what I want from Star Wars than Episode Seven was. Yeah, yeah. Because it's an adult Star Wars movie, and I'm an adult now. Yeah, but they're <laughs> so not aimed at adults, are they? They're no. aimed at kids. That's they're the problem. That's why we're children. getting the porgs. Oh yeah, so many porgs. <laughs> They're going to be everywhere, aren't they? Bloody hell. Fucking Jar Jar. <laughs> there we go. Um, is there more Star Wars news? Oh, yeah, and there's a TV show coming as well. Live action TV show. Mm. Game of Star Wars. Yeah. Star Wars of Thrones. I don't I think I I'd know. prefer a TV series rather than another three, uh, well, six years of films. Yeah. I think so. What's this, sorry? Star Wars TV series. It depends what they do. Rebels is... I like the cartoon series they do every so often. They do them really well. I don't know if live action would work. I don't know if they'd get it wrong and, and try and make it too Star Trekky or go the other way and make it too Game of Thronesy. and yeah. It'd just be convoluted bullshit I've for got an, idea. an hour a week. I've got an idea. Ewoks, Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. Just loads of Ewoks <laughs> fighting over a wooden chair. That would be amazing. <laughs> for four seasons. No. It's not going to happen, is it? No. Shame, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, Mark Hamill has denied that Luke has turned to the dark side in the next movie, which probably means that he has. So, yeah, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Does George Lucas actually know, though? This is the thing. <laughs> Who knows? Hang on, George Lucas. Mark Hamill. Oh, Mark Hamill said it. Uh, did okay. I say George Lucas? I thought you did. Maybe that was my No, hearing. you said Hamill. Oh, you did yeah, you know, just me then. I know I fuck up wow. names sometimes, but yeah, saying a completely different person. <laughs> um, right, yes. So uh, the oh, yeah, here we go again. The monster universe from bloody Universal. Oh, here we go. The dark monsters universe from Universal. Alex Kurtzman and Chris Morgan have departed, which is probably a good thing. But what what do you reckon, Jamie? Have you did you catch either the Mummy or Dare I say it, Dracula Untold? No, no, I avoided the Mummy. Yeah. Uh, I, I like the the last remake that we got with Brandon Fraser. Yeah, they oh, yeah. were okay. Oh, I never saw the very original one because it was oh, I just never got around to it. But I completely avoided this one. Right. Um, and I I think I just missed Dracula Untold. Right. I can't even think who's in it. Dracula Untold was terrible, and I can understand. They, I don't know. If, do you know what happened with it? Do you know, I didn't go anywhere near any of these. No. I just really couldn't be bothered. So without actually sort of admitting to it, what yeah. they did is they tried to start their franchise with Dracula Untold. Right. But it didn't catch and nobody liked. So they just kind of swept it under the carpet and said, yeah, that's not the beginning of the franchise. Got you. The mummy is. Right. And then that did do that again. Yeah. Brilliant. So, um, yeah, now they've got people jumping ship. Well, it's hardly surprising, is it? Well, at least Alex Kurtzman, he's going to be available to do some more Star Trek. Because yeah. it's him that's writing Star Trek Discovery. Cool. Which is going very well. Yeah. Obviously, they've renewed for their second season. It's the season break after ah. tonight's episode for me. But this it came morning. out today. Yeah. Because we time to catch up for work. Cliffhanger? Um, Tribbles? No Tribbles yet. Damn. Um <laughs> Yeah, definitely. It definitely feels like they've purposely put in. I wouldn't say necessarily cliffhanger, but like a, a, an element of the storyline that's very important that makes you want to come back. Right. Okay. I wouldn't say it's necessarily a cliffhanger as such. It's not like an EastEnders moment. Like dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> so anyway, they are promoting it as chapter two, but in reality, it's you know, it's not. It's all been filmed at the same time. They're just having a season break. 
and they'll be back with the second half of season one on Sunday the 7th of January, which seems like a way away, but... It's not, though. It's going to go real quick, isn't it? It's like two months. This not, is episode 21 that. of Bloody the Snooze Button. Of course, yeah. it's going to it's gonna fly <laughs> by. We keep doing these podcasts and eating, to, eating into each other's time. There you go. And while they've not actually released any official viewing figures for the show, it's obviously done very well. I think we said earlier on it's been renewed for season two. Well, I've watched every episode twice. Yeah. <laughs> Apart from twice Today's one, yeah, I've watched. Oh. I've got. I went back when I first started watching it and rewatched the first couple, and then I've done the same with all the others afterwards. When I can't sleep at night, sometimes I just rewatch one to see if I missed anything. Right? Yeah. Did you miss anything? Tribbles. <laughs> <laughs> Tribbles. This is true. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're right there once you've seen it. Yeah, once you see it, it's yeah. Now I can't help but see it. <laughs> and and some episodes they're in it more than once. Ah, right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So they're not just on, are they in other places other than on the captain's desk then? Or is that the only um, place? There's, I think in one episode there is a bit where that's, there's one somewhere else. I'm trying to think now. Before oh. you know it, they'll be fucking everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> right, Doctor Who. Oh, we. Did we see the new <coughs> costume, guys? We've seen the new costume. More yeah. Mindy. Isn't it? <laughs> Isn't it just? I love it. I think it's great. With a splash of rainbow. Yeah. Uh, have you seen the image of the rainbow cast sticking out from behind the TARDIS that no. someone's done? <laughs> it's brilliant. Okay. It's basically the TARDIS with her stood in the costume and then in the background someone superimposed the cast of rainbow sticking out from <laughs> behind the TARDIS going... Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine just tagged me in a post the other day that said something about... Is it Rod from Rainbow? Who's the who's the main dude? That, that's not yeah. the main dude. The Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Yeah, 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 Jeffrey yeah, yeah. from Rainbow, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you remember these things, oh, Paul. Oh, God, yeah. Rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, name all the cast. Well, you've got Rod, you've got Jane, you've got Freddie. Um, you've got, obviously... Well, I, 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 really, really? The bungle, you remember? Of course yeah. you remember all these. Zippy. Zippy. George and Zippy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zippy. And then George, who apparently wasn't gay, he was asexual. Asexual. Apparently. Um, whereas Zippy would fuck anything that moved. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> Well, he likes a bit of bondage. He's got a he zip-up mouth. Exactly, this is it. <laughs> oh, wow, I've never thought of that before. Yeah. <laughs> How have you not you've, thought you've, of that? You've just changed my childhood. <laughs> so, yeah. And the bear's just the big gay man. Yeah, of course he is. That's why he's a bear. There we go. Do you watch Doctor Who, Jamie? I don't know. No. I, I've seen the odd episode, but there's just so much... Christmas just, specials, I do. Yeah, really. yeah. It's going to be a real change of pace, isn't it? We're going from... Quite a dark Doctor Who now to, yeah, this well. We don't know how it's going to be. We do don't we? know how that's it's going to be. I imagine but it's going to be fun at first because that's what they always. That's do. That's one thing, and that's yeah. quite a fun costume, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. And I just hope it doesn't go all Mary Poppins on us. <laughs> not for a whole season, anyway. I fucking hope not. Are you watching it relig- religiously, Paul? No, it I'm, I'm dipping in and out as much as I like. I'm, I'm still, I'm going through the entire back catalogue. At the minute, so that I can get to the Capaldi ones and give them some proper time. I've, I've yeah. seen a little bit of the Capaldi. Right. Yeah. Um, I think he makes a great Doctor Who, but I think he's, it's because he's it, really good. But he's a fanboy, isn't he? He used to run yeah. the um, fan club, didn't he, for yeah. years? Yeah. So. I think, unfortunately, the stories just weren't brilliantly written for when no. he was in it, which is uh, it seems to be the problem with a lot of the ones after David Tennant. Yeah, Matt Smith and him have had weak storylines yep. and bad dialogue. Yeah, but the character's been a good character. Yeah, it's I annoying. mean, Capaldi's a strong enough actor to to be able to carry it off and bring it as far as he can, really. But hey, there you go. I'm looking just forward me. to it. I yeah. will watch it because it's Jodie Whittaker. Yeah, I will, I will start watching it because of this change. And if there are other people out there that think the same way, well, that's good for the BBC, isn't it? Yeah, because. I dropped off from Doctor Who a long time ago, mainly because of the same reason as Star Wars, because it's it's a kids thing. It's, yeah, but it's some of the David Tennant stuff is definitely not a kids thing. That's the thing with the David Tennant stuff. You went from stuff that was totally suitable for kids to stuff that's a little bit scary for kids and quite suitable for teenagers. Sound to of then drums, to quite mean? dark stuff. No, no. Even or after that, there's the Scarecrow, um, the Family of Blood. Where he basically like it's a uh, sort of World War One story, and then he hides one of the alien creatures Up down a well, one Sorry. inside a mirror, and he sort of 
he's explaining, you know, they wanted to live forever, so I had let them live forever. That's this right. one's it was down dark, a well. wasn't it? Yeah. This uh-huh. one's the shadow you see in a mirror. Every time you think you've seen something behind you in a mirror, that's her. Like, this one's going to be a scarecrow for eternity. And this one's, um, yeah. And it's ju- it that just, was really dark, yeah, wasn't it? Really yeah, really dark. Like, there's some really dark stuff in the David Tennant episodes. And then there's others that are just light and bubbly. Like, even the one with the... Uh, What's her name? Um, Catherine Tate in for the first time, the where she's the yeah. bride, bride yeah. and he he basically like commits genocide, like on a whole species, right? And he, like it turns him dark for a while, and then he has no companion for a little while, and then once he starts getting companions again, he becomes a bit more himself again. But then is insistent on like being in control because he committed genocide. Right, it's I've got to say, dark. It, Doctor Who. And Rick and Marty crossover. Oh. Would we want to see it or not? Yeah. Hell yeah. Even if it was just... I I think I'd like it if it was just... Uh, they turn up at the same place at the same time. Yeah, just yeah. like, what the... F- who, who the fuck are you? You know what I mean? That kind yeah, of yeah. standoff mean, thing. And then they just fuck off in different directions again. Does that mean live action Rick and Morty or animated Doctor Who? Well, it'd be both, wouldn't it? Because I think it'd have to happen in the Doctor Who episode. Oh, I see. And it would have to happen in the Rick and Morty one. Ah, what do you reckon, Jamie? I'd be interested to see a live action Rick and Morty. Yeah. Like, I think Capaldi would be perfect for yeah. to play Rick. Rick. <laughs> be a perfect Rick. True. Imagine that. In the guise of um, uh, Tucker from The Thick of It. Oh, yeah. Malcolm yeah. T- when God. he was Malcolm Tucker. Yeah. God, if he did it yeah. that angle, yeah. it was a drunk Malcolm Tucker. Imagine <laughs> that. Yeah. Have oh. you seen The Thick of It, Jamie? I'm sh- I'm sure I have, yeah. Are you into politics in any way? Not particularly. Yes. I'm pretty pretty dumb when it comes to politics. I think uh, yeah, you would have to be a little bit I don't know, that's minded, what put me you? off. That's what put me off. The I whole don't think you need to understand politics to you enjoy don't, it. You don't you don't it's not actual circumstances, but what happens in the background. Or maybe it's more enlightening in that way. Yeah, it's, I don't know. I think it's, for a lot of people it is. Like I I have friends that work in politics and understand a lot of politics, so I've kind of got a different angle on it but a lot of my friends that are really into that have never had any interest in politics but fucking love that show he plays a guy he's a spin doctor basically he's the guy that controls the press uh, for, okay. on behalf of the government and he's an asshole every, yeah but everybody <laughs> that he works for and with are assholes and they're all fucking jumping under the bus constantly and he's just trying to juggle them all and make everything work out fine and he's the biggest baddest asshole of them all and that's why you like him yeah Yeah. because he's the only one that seems to actually be able to tell what's going on and control it at the same time you feel quite sorry for him because yeah yeah it's true morons yeah so yeah anyway yeah so doctor who i don't know when that's coming i suppose they'll do it christmas Christmas there is a christmas special with capaldi's death um changing over to her and then the new series will be next year, I imagine. Yeah, just to clarify, it's not that we're changing from a male doctor to a female doctor. I'm concerned about it was the, the whole outfit. going from from very dark yeah, to yeah. quite what could possibly be quite a jovial, which we've had before, but it could be a, a very sudden change of pace. Yeah, because they didn't they, like they didn't really tone it down from darkness in the end of Capaldi series. No, no. It's, it stayed very dark till yeah, the very yeah, end. Yeah. So, so what happens in the Christmas one? Mm. Cool. Right, and uh, there are a couple of more things, but yeah, we can just brush over those. Metal Gear Solid, the movie, they've got a writer. Brilliant. It's going to happen. Again, again, they had a writer before and it was all in post-production and then it stopped. Well, (laughs) Sony Pictures have hired the Jurassic World screenwriter Hmm. for that one. Um, (laughs) We will see what happens. (laughs) Jamie's reaction says it all. I'm a massive Metal Gear fan, so I think you could just watch all the cutscenes and that should be enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's ridiculous. The Incredibles? Anyone like The Incredibles? Love Uh, The Incredibles. Yeah, it was a good film. It's a fantastic four film that should have been. (laughs) (laughs) The Pixar movie that's just coming, Coco. Apparently, we can expect a trailer for Incredibles 2. Good. With Coco. Yay. It's getting very good reviews. Well, there's not really been an awful Pixar movie. There's been a couple that are weaker, but there's the no sequels. I think the yeah, d- but they're not good dinosaurs. Pixar. Bit... They're Disney. They tend to be Disney films rather than Pixar. The sequels. The the Monsters University ones are Monsters Pixar, U- Monsters it? University and Toy Story two, three, and four. But or like Cars two and um, three are kind of. They, I think three's more Pixar involved, but I think the second one was a uh, Disney cash in. Disney cash in with <laughs> Pixar. So that makes sense. Yeah, and then some of the other 
like Pixar sequels haven't even been anything to do with Pixar, which is crazy. <laughs> right, fair enough. Um, and kind of on the same note, Gilmore de Toro's Pinocchio. It's not happening. Ah, the only one I was interested in. It's not happening. I don't know why. It's kind of dead in the water. Uh, I'll read up about it a bit more and perhaps we'll cover that again next week. But yeah. Trailers. Don't Let's do, do some quick trailers. Um, Steven Spielberg's The Post had its first trailer this week. That's the one about the Washington Post yep. publishing the papers that ousted the American government for lying uh, about the uh, yeah. Vietnam, Vietnam War. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Looks pretty good. It's out on the 22nd of December. Cool. Sherlock Gnomes. <laughs> I saw oh, a section me. of this trailer, a flash up. You know, as you scroll through Facebook and occasionally a video starts playing, I saw a snippet of a gnome in a Sherlock Holmes hat and I went, what? And scrolled back to it and then it was like, Sherlock Gnomes. I was like, oh, fuck off. This is right. the sequel. It's the sequel to Gnomeo yeah. and Juliet. What? When was there a Gnomeo and Juliet? <laughs> oh, that was about seven <laughs> years ago. It's a good seven movie. years yeah, ago. I was, a long, I was a blockbuster at the sequel, time. So. <laughs> it's actually very good. You should give wow. it a shot. I mean, again, don't expect too much of it. I don't know if I can handle <laughs> that. I don't like gnomes on the best of days. <laughs> Not to be trusted. Yeah, it's no. Lots and lots of gnome jokes in it. And yeah, it's worth a watch. I'm going to no. stay at gnome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, ironically, when I clicked on the new trailer for Peter Rabbit for some reason, <laughs> which is out on the 9th of February, uh, I was treated to the trailer for, no, for, for Sherlock Gnomes as my, uh, as my advert <laughs> on the front of my YouTube video. Wow. So yeah, um, Sherlock Gnomes is out on the 23rd of March, so it's a way off. And Peter Rabbit, which I know you're looking forward to, Fuck. Adam... Fuck, we love it. Fuck, oh, um, I don't mind a modernising shit, but stop using fucking James Corden. He's all right for five minutes, isn't he? He's all right for like half a second of Gavin and Stacey, or like four seconds of him talking before other celebrities sing over the top of him in a car. But everything else is shit. <laughs> I can't stand those adverts he's in at the minute. Do you know the best thing he's ever been in? That's how you park a cat. Uh, Fuck off. (laughs) The only thing he's ever been in where I genuinely liked him, Doctor Who. Uh, Do you know what? I didn't didn't mind him in that. Yeah, he was actually likeable in that because you felt sorry for him. Everything else. And and we see him interviews as well. He's a jumped up little prick as well, isn't he? He's got a real chip on his shoulder. He thinks he's bloody fantastic. Never a good thing. No. There you go. Fat cockneys. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck them. Anyway, um, bullish... No. <laughs> Ferdinand. He is a bull. Um, <laughs> there's, a, there's a new trailer for Ferdinand as well. Uh, have you guys seen the, the no. trailers Ferdinand. for this at all? What, what the it's footballer? No. <laughs> <laughs> Ferdinand. No, the, the, the bull that doesn't want to be a bullfighting bull. Oh Christ! It's yeah. a documentary or animated. No, I don't think any bull. Because <laughs> this documentary would be great. I don't think any bull. Oh, he's integrated to now. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah, I don't think any bull actually thinks. Do you know what? I'm going to run around in the sand pit in front of thousands of people and <laughs> get stabbed, stabbed the stabbed. fuck to death. Yeah. Well, beforehand, I'm I'm drugged off my tits. Oh yeah, this is true. Do you know? Yeah, what, no, do but do, that, do you know they? what? When they when they get drugged off their tits, they probably go in there, go, "Oh, it's a lovely ballet, like the tiny little rabbit that I am." Woo! Look at me! Look at me! Ow! Stop ow. poking me! Why are there all these bees everywhere? Yeah. Fuck off, you evil bees! I think um, Blue Sky Entertainment will probably avoid putting these these factors into their movie. But yeah, I just think it's bad taste personally choosing that as a subject matter. It's a kids' really. film. It's a kids' film they about an atrocious, horrific, barbaric act. Yeah. So, yeah, good good luck with that one. Brushed over all that with Hercules as well, didn't they? Yeah, about yeah, that's massacre true. Massacre and his family and everything. That wasn't yeah. in a Disney film yeah. for some reason. No. Anyway. Though yeah. they show Rapunzel locked up in a tower and the other one drugged to sleep forever and the other one that's uh, stuck in a forest... Like but these are all made-up stories, being aren't they, as well? sexually abused by dwarfs. You can edit them a bit, but bullfighting's real. Yeah, you exactly. You can find it anywhere <laughs> on the internet, and it's <laughs> fucking gross. So, hey. Just realised there's a lot of animated stuff in the trailers this week. There's hardly any actual well, that's that time live-action of year, movies, it? but yeah, I suppose we're well, getting close to Christmas. Catch him before Christmas. There's another final... Oh. Well, I'd say the final trailer for Disney's... 
all I was going to say is, if the you're a film producer, okay. would you want to commit to any particular actor at the minute? <laughs> <laughs> wow. yeah. Wipe him out, right? Get anim- right. Can we just animate them all? <laughs> <laughs> so much so. easier to edit out. Yeah. <laughs> Just so, wreck on the voice actor and off you go. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think we're going to see quite a few more animated films <laughs> next <laughs> next year, definitely. Who knows? But yeah, um, there was a final trailer for Pixar's Coco that we mentioned earlier on. That's out oh, 27th of October in America. So I'm guessing... Soon. That's that's over here very, very soon. Um, Early Man, which is Aardman's uh, animated yeah, yeah. thing. Looks bloody hilarious. It doesn't, it's not, a, I thought it was going to be like the Gogs, but it actually looks like it's a little bit tamer than the Gogs, which right. is fine with me. Like, yeah. Yeah. Did looks you guys see Sean the Sheep at all? I've seen Sean the Sheep. Yeah. yeah. Did you manage to get all the way through it? No. Did, I no. found it a bit hard going, but yeah. I think some of the humours, it gets quite boring quickly. Yeah. That, I think that one's a cash-in, though, isn't it? Because he was the character from He's the third Wallace and Gromit. It? So, yeah. you know, and they'd had the cartoon, animated cartoon series. So I think they, yeah, they were just trying to cash in there with that one. Can't blame them. I mean, no. if, if they're gonna, kids are going to soak it up. Well, yeah. they did, um, is it Timmy Time as well, for younger yeah. kids? <laughs> for, I, I know my youngest watches it. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure that was Aardman. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's like, What's Timmy Time? It's basically... A younger it's Sean, Sean the sheep's sheep. cousin oh, right. or brother That's or something. It, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's just like a yeah. about a nursery. See babies rather baby than animals. Yeah. Right. Cool. Yeah, aimed at babies rather than toddlers. Yeah. Sort of thing. <laughs> I might check that out. I have a <laughs> I have a very young child. <laughs> Timmy Tam. Timmy Tam. But not that Timmy. <laughs> <like> South Park. <laughs> <laughs> that would be weird. <laughs> and Gotham guy, but Gotham by Gaslight. Uh, it's that oh, animated yeah, film, isn't is it? That one? Batman, yeah, hunting down the. It's a nineteen twenties noir yeah, style, that's isn't right. it? Right, hunting down the Ripper in Gotham City. Yeah, yeah, I like the look of it. I, I, I'm after the, um, killing joke one. I'm. It's the first oh, animated yeah. like DC thing that I haven't actually liked. Right. Okay. Um. So I'm kind of. Did you not like it because it stayed away from the source material too much? or No, I just thought it, it, there were bits of it that were added in there for shock value that didn't need to be as... Are we talking about Barbara Gordon? Yeah, yeah, okay. there was things that didn't need to be in there and in the way that they'd done Sexy them. Sexy time with the Oracle. Oh, at the yeah. beginning, yeah. 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 It wasn't and, great. And there's also like... <laughs> There's also like um, some other bits of like Justice League ones that I that I wasn't too keen on, and it's the more recent ones basically, and they've kind of made me go, I'm a bit apprehensive now. Like, yeah, fair. I'm not sure where to stand on it. Where is the Batman and Robin caped duo or whatever it was called? Was fucking oh, I still haven't seen that. I need to watch it. Uh, I managed to get the only showing at the cinema, and it was yeah, it was awesome. So yeah, Gotham by Gaslight. I am kind of, oh, I'm not sure. Trailer straight. looks good. It does. It's going straight to Blu-ray. Oh really? No, yeah. even cinema releasing it. No, oh, so that's a shame. don't actually have a release date for it yet, but it's it's not far away. It's probably in time for Christmas, I expect. So yeah, might get that one. <laughs> might <laughs> might drop a hint or two. See if I can get that one for Christmas, or just Pirate Bay it. Um, I, know, I know what I'm getting for Christmas. Do you? Yeah. Go on. No, I'm not saying it's got to be a surprise. <laughs> I've already oh, got my Christmas you. present. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'll tell. I say it for the next podcast. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. My my <laughs> girlfriend got me something, but I I don't want to say what it is because I want it to be a surprise for me when I get it. You just want to try and forget about it. Yeah. Okay. It's really difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Rather than have us bring it up on every single yeah, podcast. Exactly, yeah. Because yeah. well, you will. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Oh, we didn't tell you the release date for Early Man. That's on the 16th of February. And the last trailer is bloody Fifty, <laughs> 50 Shades Freed. You guys, what? You guys love Fifty Is this Shades. a fourth one, third one, sixth third one? Third one. Uh, Are they splitting this one into two? Probably. They seem to do that with every that trilogy most, now. I think they are. I, th- I seem to remember that happening. They that, did that, that with two mentioned. of the Harry Potter films. They did that with one of the... Hunger Games. Mongo, Hunger yeah, Games, I was going to say Mongo Jerry. <laughs> 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 all right. Mockingjay films, yeah. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. They did it with The Hobbit. Yeah, didn't well, yeah. just one into a trilogy, wasn't yeah. it? But yeah. Anyway, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure I seem to remember somebody telling me that 
this last one is being split into two. But yeah, that's out on, on Valentine's Day, gents. Well, that'll be a lot of um, cinemas finding plastic bags full of cucumbers again. I thought it bloody <laughs> happened last year, didn't it? Yeah, <laughs> oh. four different cinemas. Hey, was it, it that many? And, that, and that, there was two in Ameri- two cinemas in America and two over here that found bags of cucumbers. Brilliant. Whether the person had just been shopping and forgot them, I don't know, but apparently they didn't look like they'd uh, <laughs> just been bought from the shop and left. Oh. Nice. So, yeah. That's Bad a bit weird. We're eating popcorn in front of you, let alone... Yeah. No longer entertaining killed. themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, I think that'll do it. Yeah. Should we wrap it up? Yeah. Go cool. on then, Adam. Where can we find you? You can find me in the usual places, Adam Gatchel Arts on Facebook and the YouTubes uh, in December. If you are locally based on the Isle of Wight, uh, I will be hopefully um, doing three different shows. A show with Reading Between the Lines, a show with Cow Speak, and supporting uh, Son of Dave. So look Ooh. out for that. Um, How do you get a slot supporting Son of Dave? Apparently I'm a poet. Yes, Son of a Dave. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so look out for that. And uh, hopefully, uh, I spent last weekend working on a film, so there'll be another short film coming out soon that my name will be in the credits of. So again, look out for that. And Whose film is that? Um, it's well, They've got films out already on their channel. Seven Horse, um, I think they're called Seven Horse, Seven Horse Productions. Uh, they did a short film called It... Um, another one called Out Cinemas just recently. That one about the clown. No, no, it's much better than that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, and uh, they did one called Outnumbered. Um, cool, which is good, and it's not about a British family with kids. <laughs> uh, there you go. Yeah, so that, that's me, Adam Gatrell, superstar in his own town. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Jamie, where can we find you? Uh, usually skulking at home. I try and avoid as many people as I can, usually. Good news. Right. So, um, but, I mean, I'm on PlayStation. I'm, uh, my tag name's Ultra Strife. Ultra Strife. Ultra Strife, yeah. With, um, a, with an underscore? No, no, just one word. One cool. word. Um, nice. I don't know. I mean, if you want to look me up on Facebook, you can. But I'm not very interested. Did so. you say you've got uh, Instagram as well? Instagram, yeah. Uh, again, I'll get you a link. Cool. Um, because I can't remember the name for it, <laughs> but there's some interesting pictures on there. So cool, we'll add that below. Yeah, if you like your action stuff. figures and uh, Transformers, he's got plenty of pictures on there. It's really cool. good. Yeah, good stuff. Paul, uh, usual places: Rocket Punch Collectibles and uh, Curiosity. Um, yeah, find us on eBay and on the Facebook group. I should have tons of stuff coming soon. I've just gone and bought myself a fancy little lighting rig. Nice. Just to take some really nice photos and stuff. Nice. So Yeah, I can do 24 hours a day photographing now if need be. Right. So it was nights when, like, Adam, yeah, just kind of, no, I ain't going to sleep tonight. Well, I there we go. I can walk down to yours and you help can me photograph, help me photograph stuff, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, might be coming handy should we ever decide to do the video cast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. I've yeah, because like, I've got this lighting now. It should. We've uh, been speaking about this in the background, haven't we? Bit yeah, of show we and have. tell, bit of. But a show and tell, but not like Hollywood. Yeah. Not just a <laughs> no, no. them out in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> Take a look at my Transformer. Louis C.K. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. anyway, Chris, where are we going to find you? I will be hanging out on the Snoover the Crew Facebook page, editing the bloody podcast and answering questions and stuff. I, I don't know if we had any questions this week because, well, Ross isn't here. So I, and I forgot to post on Facebook asking people, so apologies. Ah, well, not to worry. Yeah. There, there is a, uh, a suggestion for a retrocast hanging around out there somewhere yeah. that Ross mentioned he'd received last week. So if you are that person, apologies, you've not been forgotten. Um, yeah, and, and my music page, of course, Chris Quinton's Music and Things. You can find that on Facebook. You can find me hosting an open mic night on a Thursday night in Cows which is, yeah, something I've been doing for 11 years. I don't know why I've not mentioned it until no. quite recently. And he doesn't, mean in a, he doesn't mean inside a cow. He <laughs> means in a place called cows. <laughs> That's right. We're Just for cows anyone... On the Isle of Wight. Yeah, yeah. For anyone that doesn't know what that means, it's a place on the Isle of Wight. The Dermot, right. Diamond Turd of Britain. I'm a host of an open mic night, so if you want to come along and play or sing or tell jokes or do some magic or read some yeah. poetry, anything at all, feel free. Every Thursday, the Vectors Tavern. And... What else? Oh, I suppose we we better do an honourable mention for Libsyn and Stitcher. Yeah, yeah. Because they host it all and that. They host our podcasts and stuff. And probably do some mega stuff. What have they done this week then, Paul? It's phenomenal. I mean, they've outed most of the people in Hollywood. <laughs> and they're going to continue to do so. 
Um, I know they're currently um, constructing a complete replica of, um, well, most of the collection of Pata- Bovington Tank Museum, just outside Rossi's house. Yeah. Really? Currently, yeah, just for tonight. Uh, by the way, he's away at the moment because he's uh, he's uh, trying to hunt down some uh, Jewish AIDS um, <laughs> victims uh, from the Auschwitz days who've uh, been arrested near uh, the Bovington Tank Museum, confused for Nazis. So it's far less sweary without him, isn't it? It is, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Strange, Ross. Isn't it? Even, and I swear a lot, and I swear <laughs> less when Ross isn't here. <laughs> you're not listening to this, Ross. I know you're not because you never listen to the podcast, you bastard. <laughs> but hi. Oh, just one honor honorary cut. There yes, we go for him, because we, we've gone through a whole podcast without one. Which so. I'll either bleep or cut out. Yeah, fine, yeah. <laughs> I think bleep. Just, just, so bleep, bleep. just bleep it, Don't so we can bleep. actually say, well, there's been bugger all swearing during this episode. Well, there's a bit. In, you know, there is, but not compared to normal. Anyway, this <laughs> outro has taken ten minutes, so that's enough. Thank you very much, Bye. ladies and gentlemen. You've been a listener. We've been Snoo with the crew. And our special guest, Jamie. Woo-hoo. Hello. Hey. And we'll catch you next time. Say goodbye. Back next week, we sweary dairy. (laughs) Sweary dairy.